Okay, we know the building blocks of our lipids. Now let's start to build them together to make some more complex lipids. So one complex lipid that we can make is a triacylglycerol. Um, frequently we would just call these triglycerides. And we've been introduced to these earlier in the semester. So a triglyceride would have a backbone that's made of glycerol. And attached to each, um, attached to each of the carbons in the glycerol is one fatty acid tail. And what you will notice here is that it is the carboxyl end, that acid end of our fatty acid, that is attached to the um, carbons within the glycerol. So this is one triglyceride. And what you can also notice here is that each of the fatty acids in this triglyceride are different from each other. So you can kind of do a bit of a mix and match. Now, what are the functions of these triglycerides? Primarily energy storage. Um, and we have talked earlier in the semester about how much energy we can generally get out of these fatty acids when we go through the process of beta oxidation followed by the Krebs cycle. And then our second category of complex lipids are the glycerophospholipids, which frequently we will just call phospholipids. Um, phospholipids have a similar structure in that they also have this uh, three carbon glycerol backbone. But in the case of phospholipids, they have only two fatty acid tails attached to the glycerol backbone. And then attached to the third car uh, carbon in the glycerol backbone is a phosphate group. And this phosphate group is kind of unique because it is polar, it is hydrophilic, it is water loving. Whereas the fatty acid tails, they are hydrophobic, water fearing. And so together what that means is that our phospholipid is amphipathic, meaning it has one end that is hydrophilic, water loving, the other end of it is hydrophobic or water fearing. And that is going to cause these phospholipids to have some very specific functions. Okay, so now let's look at how we would actually make a triglyceride, how we would put it together. So we would start with our glycerol backbone, and then we have our three fatty acid chains. In order to, the chemical reaction that we would need to use in order to build these together is a dehydration reaction because we would lose a, um, a three molecules of water in the process. So we see we'd start with our glycerol over here, and there are hydrogens attached to the hydroxyl groups of the glycerol. Those hydrogens are going to bind with the hydroxyl groups that are part of this carboxyl on the, uh, the acid end of our fatty acid. So the hydrogens from the glycerol plus the hydroxyls from our fatty acid will bind together and form water, and that will then create a bond um, between the uh, carboxyl and carbon of our fatty acid with the glycerol backbone. That is a dehydration synthesis. Now, as I had uh, shown in an image earlier, we know that these triglycerides can have can be kind of a mix and match between different types of fatty acids. Typically, these fatty acids are going to be longer chain fatty acids, 16 to 18 to 20 carbons long. So that's kind of what your typical triglyceride would be made of.